Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, I hope you are doing well and looking forward to a new day. Want to welcome you in to uh, Strength for the Day. This is a daily study, Monday through Friday, looking into Scripture and uh, God's Word and seeing how it applies into each of our lives. And if this is your first time joining us, thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope that it would be an encouragement and help to you. If you've been with us along our journey, uh, man, thanks for being here. And I pray that today would uh, help you and uh, just give each of us strength for the day as we dive into God's Word. Uh, I'm thankful thankful that God in Scripture has uh, has application for us today. You know, the Bible is not uh, something for yesteryear or years gone by. Uh, the Bible is very applicable for today. And as we discussed a few episodes ago, it's written for uh, our encouragement and our instruction and our correction and uh, just as... as um, Scripture says it's very profitable. That's the phrase I was looking for. My mind went blank. It's profitable for us, so it can profit us even now. We are currently going through the book of Joshua. The children of Israel, God's people, have been out of the promise, or excuse me, out of Egypt now for over uh, 40 years. They have come to the Jordan River. They've crossed over, battled the city of Jericho and Ai, and then all of those kings that are listed in Joshua chapter. Um, uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then we saw the land divided in Joshua chapter 13 through chapter 19. If you're kind of curious about this, you can go back and listen to any of these podcasts uh, that have dropped the, this last month. We've been in this book of Joshua. And we come today to Joshua chapter number 20. And Joshua chapter 20, what we find is the list of um, seven or so cities that were called the cities of refuge. And we're going to kind of learn about those by reading about them, and then uh, we'll dissect our passage. It says this in Joshua chapter 20, verse number one. Remember, they're dividing up the land, where the people are going to be, who gets what city in the promised land, this area that God had committed to his people that they're finally in. It says, Joshua chapter 20, verse number one, the Lord also spoke to Joshua saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, appoint or designate for yourselves cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses that the slayer who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally may flee or run there and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he flees to one of those cities and stands to the entrance of the gate of the city, and declares his case in the hearing of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city as one of them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. Then, if the avenger of blood pursues him, they, the city, shall not deliver the slayer into the avenger's hand because he struck his neighbor unintentionally but did not hate him beforehand. And he shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the one, one who is a high priest in those days, then the slayer may return and come to his own city and his own house to the city from the which he fled. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a, a number of things here in the cities of refuge and in this, this chapter that we can learn from and that can help us. Um, but one thing that we need to realize is just understanding that the cities of refuge, what they are. Okay, so we're not going to dive into all of the ins and outs. We're not going to dive in about the priest dying and all that type of stuff. Um, but suffice to say, here's, here's what was being presented. Hey, Joshua, I want you to set up some cities all around the region so that if somebody accidentally is involved in killing someone. So you're, maybe you're working together and, you know, uh, I don't know, you're working with stones at the time and, you know, you one, you one day pick up a stone and you hand it to someone and, and they fall and hit their head because of that stone and it's just too heavy or whatever, and then they die. Well, they're going to have someone from their family that cares about them deeply. That person could 
want to avenge their loved one by taking your life. And so life for life, tooth for tooth, you know, I'm coming after you. You were there working. You handed him the rock. He fell and hit his head and we're coming after you. God says to Joshua, Joshua, you're going to set up certain cities so that the person who accidentally killed somebody was accidentally involved in that death. They can flee to that city, present their case before the elders of the city, the leadership, and then be allowed into the city. Then when the avenger of blood, the one who wants revenge for his loved one comes, the people of the city will say, no, we're going to wait until a judge and a group of peers can look into this situation and hear the sides. Because if this guy, the, the one who accidentally killed his friend, he never had ill intent. He never hated the guy beforehand. It was nothing could be proven. Well, he needs the, he needs a trial. He needs to be able to stand trial for this to see if there was any wrongdoing. So in order for him to have that trial correctly, he needs to have a safe place to be and not have his life for life and the avenger come and seek and try to kill him. And so what they do in verse number um, seven, down through the end of that chapter, they establish what are given of seven cities that would be the cities of refuge, these places that someone who gets trapped in this predicament could flee to. Now, there's a, a number of things that we could kind of dive into about the cities of refuge. Um, there's the, of course, the, uh, uh, the revenge that could be sought. We could talk about forgiveness and accidental death and all of that type of stuff. There could be uh, the person who's responsible for the death and understanding responsibility and, and, on, and uh, being able to take ownership for your actions. I mean, there's a lot that we can discuss in this chapter. However, the one thing I really want to look at is just the incredible comparison that we see for the cities of refuge and who Jesus is. So the cities of refuge were a place that if you're guilty and you escape to the city of refuge, you can find solace or comfort or help until judgment. Well, when you look at the New Testament, Jesus Christ is our city of refuge. We all are guilty before God. We deserve death and hell. We deserve God to condemn us to a life or eternity in hell. But Jesus says, if you are in me, you will be given eternal life. You will not come into condemnation. You will not come into deep judgment. So the only lack of comparison here is the person who flees to the city of refuge is waiting for judgment to see if they're guilty or not. For those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, there's not going to be a judgment one day to see if you're guilty or not or deserve heaven or deserve hell. The Bible clearly tells us that because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, if a person puts their faith and their trust in Jesus alone, receives Jesus Christ into their life, if that person trusts Jesus as their Savior, then the Scripture teaches that heaven is where they'll spend eternity. They will never suffer condemnation. They won't have judgment because Jesus took our judgment upon the cross. So what is Jesus for every believer? Jesus is our security. He is our city of refuge. So when we look at Joshua chapter number 20 and we read about the cities of refuge, we can kind of see a, a type or a picture of who Jesus is for everyone that believes in him. Now, maybe you're watching or you're listening today and you've never put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. My friend, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus loves you and that he died on the cross because of your sin and my sin. You see, our sin separates us, from, separates us from God. And because of our sin, we deserve hell and we deserve the punishment. Do the crime, pay the time. We deserve the punishment for our sin. But that's right. That's why Jesus came. The Bible says that on the cross, he took upon himself all of the sin of all humanity. It says in the book of Corinthians that he became sin for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, 
allowed the sins of the world to be placed upon him. And he was the only acceptable sacrifice, the go-between, the mediator between us and God. And so by him receiving our sins, it was him saying to God, God, I will take all of their punishment, all of your judgment. God, I will take all of that upon myself so that they can have forgiveness offered to them. And then when Jesus was put to death, that was the sin and the condemnation, our judgment, the picture of that being sealed or solidified. Because once judgment has spoken, uh, man, death is the alternative, the only answer. But when Jesus rose from the dead, it was him proving that he is victorious over death and hell and the grave. He is victorious over all of the condemnation that could be put upon him. And Jesus is the Savior of it all. So if you've never put your faith or trust in Jesus, the, the scripture simply says that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is who he said he was and has risen from the dead, the Bible says that in scripture teaches that you will be saved, that forgiveness can be yours, that eternal life can be yours. Listen, as we look at our passage in Joshua, Jesus desires to be the refuge that you run to. God, I can't earn my right to be before you, so I claim Jesus Christ. If you've never made that decision, make that decision today. You say, Dennis, how do I make that decision? It's simple. Confess with your mouth what you are. I know I'm a sinner. Confess with your mouth what you believe. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and confess with your mouth that you want to receive him into your life. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, and today I choose Jesus. God, I repent. I realize I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus in my life. And the Bible says that if you would confess that with your mouth, that you believe it in your heart, that you will be saved. For those of you that have never made that decision, choose that today. If I could be of help to you or you have any questions about that, reach out and let me know. I'd love to help you. For those that do know Christ as Savior, today, let's just stop and thank Him. God, thank you for being my safety. God, thank you for being my city of refuge. We'll pick back up tomorrow in chapter 21. Have a great day.